Use Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve the system of equations. We have three equations here. x plus y plus z equal 4. 3x minus 2y minus 2z equal negative 3. And 4x minus y minus z equals 0. I've written our goal over here. Okay, so we would like to have a matrix in row reduced form where we can just read off the solutions. So we're going to try to put this into an augmented matrix. So we go a row at a time. Each equation becomes a row. 1, 1, 1, 4, 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0. You always want to make sure all of your variables are in order. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, because this is the X column, the Y column, the Z column, and this is your constants column. If you notice, they were very nice and they gave us the 1 in the 1, 1 entry. Now we're going to make zeros. Um, one strategy is to make a unit column at a time, make deleting 1, then create the zeros. If you do that, then these are the row operations. So we need to make a zero. So let's change, we need to change the 3 in the 2, 1 entry to zero. To make a zero, we do the negative of the number we're trying to change. We want three to be zero, so that's negative three, times the row with the leading one in it that lines up. So the one in that column is in row one. We're gonna add that to row two and put our answer back in row two. Here's my scratch. Negative three, row one. Negative three, negative three, negative three, negative 12. And add that to row 2, 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3. I get 0, negative 5, negative 5, negative 15. This is my new row 2. I'm going to rewrite row 1 because I did not change that. That was my row with my 1. <laughs> and I draw a straight line. 4. Okay, then I have 0, negative 5. Let me draw this a little bigger. 1, 1, 1, 4, 0, negative 5, negative 5, negative 15. I'm going to go ahead and also make my next 0. I also want to change the 4 in the 3, 1 entry to 0. So that's negative 4 times row 1 plus row 3 goes to row 3. 4, negative 4, row 1, negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, negative 16, and add that to row 3, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, and scroll down just a little bit, get 0, negative 5, negative 5, negative 16. This is my new row 3. So going back to my goal, we got this zero and this zero. If you notice, this is a unit column. We successfully pivoted on the one one entry. Okay. Now we can do several different things here. I'm gonna go ahead and go on with our process of making unit columns, starting with the ones and then the zeros. So the next thing I want to do is make this one in the two two spot. We're going to change the negative five in the two two position to a one. To make a one, we're going to do one over the number to change. So one over negative five times the row we're trying to change, row two, put it back in row two. You can do a multiple zero process on that when you're making zeros on one arrowhead. Anytime you're making a one, that needs to be the only thing you do. So divide everything by negative five, or multiply by one over negative five. Zero, one, one, three, zero, negative five, negative five, negative 16. So I got that guy right there. Now I want to change 
the 1 and the 1, 2 entry to 0. So I do the negative of the number I'm trying to change, so negative 1 times the row with the 1 in it. Now it's in row 2. I'm looking at this one right here. You can actually circle your pivot elements, that one. I'm going to add that to row 1 and put it back in row 1. Scroll down just a little bit. New row one is one, zero, zero, one. My row two contains my leading one, so I'm going to rewrite that. Now I'm also going to change row three. I want to change the negative five in the three, two entry to a zero. To do that, I do five times the row with the leading one, which I've circled as row one, I'm sorry, the, I'm in row two, add that to row three and put the answer in row three. <clears throat> Let me scroll down a little bit so I can do the scratch. Five row two is zero, five, five, 15. I'm gonna add that to row three, zero, negative five, negative 5, negative 16. 0, 0, 0, negative 1. That is my new row 3. Okay. If I go back to my goal, look at the top, I made another unit column. I got this 0 and this 0. Unit column here and here. The next step, um, would be to change the zero and the three, three entry to a one. Well, we can't, it's a zero. So are we in row reduced form? There's a stair step of ones. Anytime there's a leading one, it ends up with a unit column. The next leading one would have been here so I don't have to worry about this. So this is in row reduced form, row reduced echelon form. So I can read off my answers. Remember this was the X column, the Y column, and the Z column. So my answers are X equals one, Y plus Z equals three, and zero equals negative one. Looks pretty good until you look a little more closely at the third equation. Zero equals negative one, that's nonsense. So we see that there's no way that can be true. We have no solution. I want to point out one more thing. We could have done this a little bit differently. Another option, I'm going to start with this matrix right here. One, one, let me see. Just to show you, you can do a few, um, a little bit different things with this, with the Gauss Jordan. I like to tell my students to get the one first, and then get the zeros because that works every time, especially if someone's nervous. But you do have other options, like I'm about to show you here. If you noticed here, these numbers were the same. I could have just said, I want to change this one to a zero. I know this one needs to be a zero. To make a zero, I know that I have to keep that row and add a multiple of another row. So I could do negative row two plus row three goes back to row three. I'm not changing row two, I'm just using it to change row three. So if I did the negative, negative row two, that's zero, five, five, 15, and I add that to row three. I just get my same answer as I got earlier, just in a different order, okay? Then the next step would be 
Let's do 1 over negative 5. Row 2 goes to row 2. Like that. And then negative 1 row 2 plus row 1 goes to row 1. I'm just going through this quickly. You can check this on your own. But you'll see we get the exact same thing. So this is just another option. Um, if you're not comfortable, always make, you know, if you're not real comfortable with the process, you can always get the leading one first and then use these steps written this way to make the zeros. Okay, good luck.